Senator Wish Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Um, I'd like to begin begin by focusing on the uh, concept of deterrence uh, and pointing out on page six of the instrument of designation of the Republic of Nauru as a regional processing centre. Um, page six where it says discouragement of irregular and dangerous maritime voyages. Clause 21. I think that designating Nauru to be a regional processing country may act as a circuit breaker in relation to the recent surge in the number of irregular and dangerous maritime voyages to Australia. On the following page, page seven, it then concludes, I also think that designating Nauru to be a regional processing country will make it more difficult for people smugglers to sell the opportunity to resettle in Australia. The key reason we're debating this motion today is that this regional processing centre can effectively process people, but it can provide a deterrent. Uh, one month ago, I debated this subject along with my colleagues, and it, I pointed out what was very obvious to me back then, um, the question of risk management, what would occur if the numbers of boats and arrivals continued? Would we have the resources in place to process them in a place like Nauru or Manus Island, given their capacity? And what would happen if this was to continue, and the numbers were to continue, just assuming for a second that we were wrong and that the deterrence wasn't provided for whatever reason, and I'll get to that in a minute, what would we do then? Now, it's not something to brag about, but certainly looking at the arrivals, which are actually mentioned also on page six in the year to 8th of September 2012, Nearly 9,000 passengers have arrived, and nearly 2,500 have arrived in the last month since I spoke about this. And it's been pointed out by a number of my fellow Green Senators today that Nauru itself is nearly full, or will be at capacity if we're to move existing refugees there. And certainly, if these boat numbers continue to arrive, we will need to initiate Manus Island. This has also been reported in the media. Uh, it was the front page of The Australian yesterday. Uh, let's look at the Malaysian solution. Now, the Malaysian solution, as was reflected in the Houston panel recently, is on the bottom of the pile as far as an option for us as a humane country in international law to send refugees. The reasons being, apart from the fact that the High Court's already decided that us sending our refugees to Malaysia is illegal in international law, um, there is no legal protection for refugees in Malaysia. They're not part of the Refugee Convention that haven't been signed. We do have evidence of uh, inhumane treatment, such as abuse and torture. Caning, caning is one example. And the Houston panel said it's going to take a long time before these problems can be fixed and before they, for example, do sign the convention. Now, this is not having a go at Malaysia at all. Um, their reality is different to ours. But from where we're standing in parliament today, it's very obvious that the Malaysian solution, if it is a solution, and I very much doubt whether it is, and the Greens certainly don't advocate sending our refugees to Malaysia. Where do we go next? If Nauru is full and Manus Island is full, Manus Island, my understanding, can take 600 people at peak capacity, Nauru up to 3,000, nearly at capacity. What do we do then? Do we set up a series of human rubbish tips around this country where we dump people? How many islands possibly could we put detention centres on? How is that going to look to the world? The reason I raise this is because, as I mentioned a month ago, and as, as someone who's new to Parliament, it seems to me that the politics of this debate 
has been pitched at a very debased level, and that in a lot of ways it's not just parliamentarians here who want this issue to go away and would like to see a quick fix, but I also think a big part of the Australian people also want to see a quick fix. And they expect that the Pacific solution, as it stands, is going to be a silver bullet and that this problem is going to go away. Well, I think we've got very good evidence in the last month since this was flagged to the world that the problem is not going to go away. And the boats, and I hate using this term, these words, but the boats haven't been stopped. Now, I enjoyed Senator, I've got to actually make sure I pronounce his, <laughs> pronounce his name, Senator Dennis's speech today. I sensed there was a bit of, bit of the philosopher in him when he spoke today. But it's interesting he spoke of people, people smugglers, this external entity, as people who are rational and planning and calculating <coughs> in how they traffic the world's poorest people to Australia and some of those who suffer in misery. A calculating rational group of people. That may be true. Maybe people, smugglers, do have cartels. But if they are that way inclined, it seems a simple enough proposition to me that if they're standing back and looking at our new Pacific solution, which we're here to debate today, then the math is very simple. These centres are nearly full and are likely to be full. So if more people keep coming and the people smugglers are that well organised and they have the planning in place, they're just going to look at it and go, well, we can overrun this island where people are dumped. And then what are the Australians going to do then? What are we going to do then when the 600 people in another island are full to capacity? So it's an interesting concept that people smugglers are calculating. And if they are, it makes sense to me that they've already come up with a solution for us. And that is they'll keep sending the boats, they'll keep trading in human misery, which none of us want to see in here today. And then we're going to be stuck with the same problem we had months ago. But once again, what concerns me is that the Australian people believe this is going to go away. We've told them enough times. I certainly haven't. My Green parliamentarian colleagues haven't, haven't told them. But Tony Abbott's told them that we can stop the boats. We did stop the boats. Okay. Well, you, haven't, you haven't stopped them yet. So, where do we go next? The issue is in this country we need to have an honest and mature debate. And this is also something that the good Senator Sinodinus mentioned. In terms of us reflecting on, as a country, how do we deal with this solution? Of course we need a solution to be put in place. Of course we need laws. I totally agree with him when he says that. I just disagree that this is the right law and the right policy prescription for this problem. Because I do not believe, for a complex problem like this, we're anywhere near a, a solution. And we should be managing the expectations of the Australian public to offer up, through spin and rhetoric and nauseating messaging, constantly that we can stop the boats is wrong. And I think it's idiocy. So, can we afford to take 25,000 people or 20,000 people? Can we afford as a country to take 100,000 people? Half a million people? I don't have the answers to that. And I'd be very surprised if anyone in parliament or anyone in this country has the answer to that. And it's my feeling that that's because we haven't delved deeply into this issue. 
And I would question whether Senator Sinodinos has the answers to this issue. Because if you believe what the Cross Party was talking about with refugees recently, the push factors that are going to be facing refugee movements into our region aren't going to go away. They're going to get a lot worse. And in particular, they singled out the Tamils in Sri Lanka, but Afghanistan, where we're operating with our forces, as being a very significant issue for future refugees seeking asylum from persecution. Potentially millions of people. So, once again, if we've got an, two island rubbish tips at the moment that can process nearly 4,000 human beings, poor unfortunate human beings, where are we going to stick 400,000? And as far as concentrating on the pull factors and us being too soft, what would the difference be between these people who fear execution or worse, if that's possible, in their own country? What's the difference between the pull factors of going and living in Malaysia or another regional processing centre in Indonesia or someone else, somewhere else? If you're that desperate, it makes sense you're going to try and get away. So I think all the arguments about pull factors and Australia aren't too different when you're desperate and you're dealing with extreme situations to what we see in other countries. So I would just urge my fellow parliamentarians to rise above the gutter with their rhetoric in this House and start speaking rationally and logically and honestly about how we're going to solve this problem, which I've said before I think will be the single biggest issue facing this country in the next hundred years. I wanted to focus on something positive, like my fellow colleague Senator Rhiannon, and that is the Greens Migration Amendment, Health Care for Asylum Seekers Bill 2012, which we hope to bring before the House. And we would ask that the other good senators in this chamber support this bill. If I could just read very quickly a quote from an, the AMA website on a media release about the health and concerns they have about our processing facilities on areas such as Nauru and Manus Island. The AMA has tonight called on the Australian Parliament, and I'm sorry for the record, this is dated 22nd of August. The AMA has tonight called on the Australian Parliament to establish a truly independent medical panel to oversee and report regularly on the health services that are available to asylum seekers in immigration detention facilities, both onshore and offshore. AMA President Dr Stephen Hambleton told politicians at the AMA parliamentary dinner, which no doubt some people in this chamber were at, that Parliament had to restore some humanity to an otherwise inhumane approach to asylum seekers. The AMA proposes a truly independent paddle of medical experts. Now, I'm very fortunate with my, to have so many talented people in the Greens parliamentary team, and one of those is in the chamber here with me at the moment, Senator Di Natale, who is himself a doctor. And I don't know if he's currently part of the AMA, but he used to be, as did Bob Brown prior to his time in parliament. This bill sets up by the Greens, proposed by the Greens, sets up an independent board of health and mental experts to monitor and evaluate the well-being of asylum seekers who are sent offshore for processing. The panel will be empowered to make recommendations in relation to individual cases and provide six monthly reports directly to parliament. The features of the bill. The bill requires the minister to establish an independent panel to monitor, evaluate and make recommendations on the health of asylum seekers. Peak medical, mental health, nursing, dental and child health bodies will submit nominations 
from which the minister will select the panel. The bill requires the minister to establish a panel within 30 days of making a country designation. The panel will be mandated to make ad hoc recommendations directly to the minister on individual cases. The feature in place here is similar to the powers and reporting function of the Commonwealth Ombudsman. The panel will have powers to subpoena and inspect medical records held by the department or private companies running the detention sites, and the panel will largely set its own terms of reference. Sen and Senator we'll Wish Wilson, are you actually speaking to another bill no. that's not no. before the Senate? No, I'm speaking to an amendment. Oh, speaking to an amendment. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. continue on. I'll, sorry, uh, Deputy President, I thought you were going to tell me off for directly reading from a no, piece of no, paper. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I have been told it has, has happened before. Uh, um, look, just if I, could, if I could quickly talk about why this is an important policy, and I think you've heard from all uh, my fellow senators today about their concerns over the, the mental health issues of particularly having children, who in this country have so much, um, including my children, put in an island away from the rest of the world, having left their previous life in a position for a long period of time with very little hope for anything different. And it's quite logical to most of us who live the good life that we do in Australia and who are blessed with everything that Australians have that they wouldn't want to put themselves in that position, nor would they want their children to find themselves in that position either. So establishing a panel to oversee health and mental health issues is critical in the light that neither the UNHCR nor the IOM will be involved in managing the proposed offshore sites of Nauru and PNG. We believe that this is a, a solution which will help mitigate the issues that we foresee based on previous experience, the very dreadful things we've all seen on TV, self-mutilation, suicides, riots, However, it goes nowhere near far enough to actually solving the problem. So I'd just like to finish up by saying what's most important to me is, is overall how we respect humanity, how we uphold the standards that we expect for our, ourselves and our children and their future, and that we actually have a more mature and honest debate about this long-term issue and that we start managing the Australian public's expectations on this issue. And we should start here in parliament and show some leadership.